Kubernetes is everywhere. <laughs> Kubernetes is everywhere. Every job posting seems to mention it, and there are hundreds of tutorials out there. And if you're trying to break into AWS or you're trying to land your first cloud engineering role, then you probably think that you need to learn it. And here is what's strange. I've helped over 900 students learn cloud engineering and land roles at companies like AWS. And in fact, none of them needed Kubernetes to get hired. So what's actually going on here? Why is there such a massive gap between how important Kubernetes seems and how important it actually is for getting your foot in the door. Hi, I'm Suleiman. I've been in trenches in tech for more than a decade, and now I run my own AI cloud security consultancy. Now in this video, I wanna break down the future of Kubernetes, what's changing, and what this means for your career, especially if you're trying to break into cloud engineering. A fair warning though, you're going to be surprised by what I have to say. Now, before I explain what's actually happening in the market, let me quickly break down what Kubernetes does so this all makes sense. Now. When companies build applications today, they often break them down into smaller pieces rather than one big program. Think of it like instead of having one massive machine doing everything, you have lots of smaller specialized machines working together. Now these smaller pieces are called containers. They are basically packages that contain everything a piece of your application needs to run on. Now here's the problem. When you have dozens or hundreds of these containers running across multiple servers, someone has to manage all of that. Which containers run where? What happens when one crashes? How do you handle it when thousands of users suddenly show up and you need more capacity? And that's what Kubernetes does. It orchestrates all of that automatically. It's like a traffic controller for your containers, making sure that everything runs smoothly, restarting things when they fail, scaling up when the demand increases, and for companies operating at massive scale with complex applications and across multiple cloud providers, this is incredibly important and valuable. But here is where most people get confused about what this means for their career. So when you scroll through job postings and you see Kubernetes mentioned everywhere, it's easy to think that this is what I need to learn to get hired. This is a classic shiny object syndrome, chasing the thing that looks most impressive rather than the thing that will actually move you forward. Because here is what those job postings don't make obvious. 70 to 80% of roles that require Kubernetes are senior positions. We're talking architects, team leads, people with five plus years of experience. Only a tiny fraction are entry or mid-level. And there's an obvious reason for that. 98% of organizations report challenges operating Kubernetes. Over half say their biggest problem is a lack of skilled people. This isn't something that you just pick up from tutorials online. It requires years of foundational experience to do well. So companies aren't being unreasonable when they ask for senior engineers. They are being very realistic about what it actually takes, which means that if you're a beginner spending months grinding through Kubernetes tutorials or those Kubernetes exams, you're preparing for jobs that won't even look at your application just yet. Meanwhile, you're skipping the fundamentals that would actually get you interviews right now. And I've seen this play out dozens of times. Someone messages me frustrated after months of study with zero callbacks. And when I look at what they've been doing, the pattern is always the same. They jump to the advanced stuff before building any sort of foundation. And here is where things get really interesting because Kubernetes itself has changed and most people haven't even caught up yet. At first, when companies started adopting Kubernetes, they managed everything themselves, building clusters from scratch, running all the backend systems, handling every upgrade and patch manually. But then we learned maintaining all of that low level infrastructure doesn't add any value to your business. You're spending time debugging problems that have nothing to do with what your company actually does. So companies have shifted hard towards managed services on the cloud. So when we talk about Kubernetes in 2026, we're talking about services like EKS on AWS. That's where engineers actually operate Kubernetes day to day. When you use something like EKS, AWS handles all of the underlying complexity, the control plane, the upgrades, the availability, and they do it better than you could because it's literally their job. And it frees you up to focus on what actually matters for your applications. Now, to give you some perspective, before managed services, engineers would spend weeks or even months getting a Kubernetes cluster production ready. You'd be dealing with ETCD databases, API servers, scheduler configurations, all of this low level stuff that has nothing to do with the application that you're actually trying to run and operate for your customers. Now, with EKS, you click a few buttons or write some Terraform code and AWS spins up a production grade cluster in minutes. And that's why the industry has moved towards this direction. It just makes a lot of sense. Now, some people here manage services 
and think Kubernetes skills don't matter anymore. That's not true either. You still have to handle security configurations, networking policies, monitoring, cost optimization, all of that stuff, right? There's still real work to do, but the skills have shifted. Less about setting up the infrastructure from scratch, more about the application layer and an ecosystem of tools around Kubernetes. And this shift towards managed hands-off infrastructure is a standard now, but also I see it shifting towards hands-off with the application layer as well, as AI and technology start to get way better. So let me give you the honest picture of where Kubernetes fits in cloud engineering and AWS. So if you wanna make six figures and beyond as an AWS cloud engineer, then you don't need to learn Kubernetes at all. Day to day, you're setting up servers and infrastructure, configuring how different services work together, managing security so the right people and the right systems can access the right things, automating deployments so code can go from development to production, monitoring everything to catch problems before users even notice, and obviously now using AI. The thing is, for most companies, especially at a smaller scale, simpler solutions handle all of this just fine. Kubernetes matters when you're operating at genuine scale, and most companies don't have those requirements. Startups don't need Kubernetes. Most small and medium businesses don't need it either. Even plenty of larger companies run workloads on simpler solutions because that's all they actually need. I'm talking about services like ECS on AWS, which handles container orchestration without the Kubernetes complexity, or even options like Lambda for service workloads, or just box standard EC2 instances with auto scaling. These solutions get the job done for 90% of use cases without the overhead that comes with setting up Kubernetes. Now, as an engineer, know when Kubernetes is the right tool and when it's an overkill, that's the judgment that makes you valuable. And my point is, you can only develop this sort of judgment by actually understanding the full landscape. And that takes years of experience actually building production level systems, which in fact, most of you watching this video simply do not have. So if you don't need to know Kubernetes to break into cloud, then what should you actually focus on? Well, firstly, you need to know IT fundamentals like the software development lifecycle, Linux basics, and being able to navigate the terminal, Git and GitHub as well, as well as things like the cloud service models and what it means to be a first principles engineer. You have to build a foundation first and then rewire your mindset to see engineering and solving problems through a completely different lens before you even get super technical and hands-on. Now, what I mean by first principles is actually understanding the why behind the technology and not just memorizing commands. Because when you understand why networking works the way that it does, why security is architected a certain way, why companies make the infrastructure decisions that they make, you can then solve basically any problems that you've never seen before. That's what separates engineers who get stuck from the engineers who advance quickly. Now, most people skip this step because it feels slow and it's actually what accelerates everything else. Now, from there, you have to learn the core four. That's storage, networking, security, and compute. Then you'll need expertise with Python and infrastructure's code tools like Terraform, as as well as learning how to deploy CI/CD pipelines with tools like Jenkins or GitHub Actions. And finally, it's understanding the business context and how to make trade-offs and being able to explain the why behind your decisions, not just the how. Because at the end of the day, you're not just writing code or configuring infrastructure. You are solving problems. The engineer who can say that I chose this approach because it reduces our cost by 40% while maintaining the reliability that we need is infinitely more valuable than someone who just implements whatever that they're told to implement. And this is what gets you promoted and what opens the doors to senior roles. Now, these skills get you hired comfortably at six-figure level, and this is what you need to get interviews and showcase on your portfolio to break in. So let me bring this all together. Kubernetes isn't going anywhere. It's the standard for container orchestration and big tech companies like OpenAI, Netflix, are operating this at scale and will continue using it. The demand for genuinely skilled engineers in 2026 is exploding, and that creates an opportunity for those who build real expertise. The skills that matter when it comes to Kubernetes has completely shifted. Less about infrastructure setup, more about the application layer, the tooling ecosystem, and the judgment to make good architectural decisions. Now, we'll continue to see a shift towards more hands-off approach. And for those of you trying to break into cloud and AWS, Kubernetes is definitely not your starting point. And arguably, you won't ever need to learn it either. So if you're spending time on Kubernetes right now, and you don't even have an IT and cloud fundamentals locked down, then you, my friend, are chasing a shiny object that won't get you hired. It's far too complex for beginners, and even for those at entry level. And the engineers who succeed aren't the ones chasing every new technology that sounds impressive. They're the ones who build genuine understanding in the right sequence and know when to apply which tool to which problem. As always, I'm rooting for you. Good luck.